Hi, I'm Barry Bricky with the Kingsport Fire Department. Today we're going to talk about child passenger safety seats. And we're at Toyota Kingsport today. We'd like to thank them for letting us come and use their cars. And today with me I have Betsy Preston. She is from the East Tennessee Child Passenger Safety uh, Center here in Kingsport. How are you doing, Betsy? I'm great. Thank you so much. Tell everybody a little bit about what you all do there at the Child uh, Safety Center. We've been at ETSU Kingsport for the last eight years. And we are grant funded by the Governor's Highway Safety Office to East Tennessee State University. Mm -hmm. And we conduct education and installation of child passenger safety seats in the 33 counties of East Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a large catchment area, but of course, Kingsport's home. So we certainly pay close attention to our area and, and appreciate the support that we have from the fire department and different groups of people who are acting as child passenger safety technicians. Now speaking of technicians, I myself have gone through your training and yes. have been certified as a technician. Also there's members of our Kingsport uh, Police Department that are members and uh, if you need uh, to have your seat checked out, and more than likely you may, and uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit, tell us some of the problems that a lot of people have uh, with their child seats. You know, it's amazing. About 95% of all of our seats are installed incorrectly. Now, I don't mean that these are gross, gross errors, but every time there's an error, it really decreases the ability of that seat to protect your child. Mm -hmm. And I think we all understand that parents and caregivers want to do the very best for their children. Absolutely. They just don't understand some of the subtleties of uh, proper installation and one of the things that's amazing is that there are some very very fine lines uh, for proper installation and it's difficult to understand what those are mm -hmm. and so we tell people over and over and over again read your instruction manual and read the manual that comes with your car because these two have to be compatible mm -hmm. and sometimes you'll have a seat that you think is the perfect seat and it won't fit in your car. So the issue is making sure that you have read the installation manual from your seat as well as the manual that goes with your automobile to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do. Well, absolutely, well I can uh, tell you from experience, after I was certified, I went home <laughs> and I fixed both of my car seats. I have two small children and they are now uh, installed properly and the ones that are in my parents' car are installed properly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, it was... Uh, a and it shock. Was, it was. It was very <laughs> shocking. And I can say that my wife is very pleased mm -hmm. that they are installed properly. Now, today we're going to look at installing uh, some different types of seats. Well, we're going to talk about the different types of car seats, and uh, some of you may have ones just like these. Now, this is a rear-facing, infant-only car seat. Tell us a little bit about this seat. This seat is for a child from birth to about four to six months, 22 pounds. And one of the things that you need to learn to do in the very beginning is to read the labels on the side of the seat. It's very important that you understand what the manufacturer is telling you about weight limits and about any particular instructions that they have for that seat. This is a seat that has a detachable base. A lot of people like the detachable base because they put the base in their car, they take the seat and move it in and out of the vehicle but then they, they can take it back and put it in another automobile. This is great for parents who each have automobiles and they can take the seat in and out and make sure that they don't have to have a second seat. This seat, you need to make sure that the child is within the weight limit of the seat that's stated on the side. You want to move the child out of the seat as soon as they are long enough and they weigh enough that they can go into a convertible car seat. <laughs> An infant must be rear facing for the first 12 months and 20 pounds. It is extremely important that parents understand that. Sometimes they're given information from individuals whom they trust that say you can turn the baby around at six or eight months old because they're over 20 pounds. 
That's not the deal. It's 12 months and 20 pounds. It's not either or, it's both of them. And what we need to understand is that the reason we want that child rear facing is because of the calcification of their bones. If they're in a crash, which is usually a frontal crash, that baby's head would be thrown forward and their airway would be cut off. It's not that their neck isn't strong enough. It has to do with the general calcification of the bone system. 12 months and 20 pounds. You can take the base, put it in one car, leave it in there, take the top part and move it back and forth. Another thing that's extremely important is to understand that the handle has to be down on the seat when you have it in the automobile. You'll drive along and see parents who have the handle up. That's our first clue that there's something wrong because it has to be down when it is in the automobile. Now, I've, uh, I've come across a few uh, parents of really young children and they're worried about when they get their car seat in there that uh, the mom or dad will say, well, why does it, it'll move like this? It's real tight here, but it'll move up and down. Why is that? The, an infant seat is made to what we call cocoon. It's made to move up and go over the child and protect the child against the back seat and as it tips over you can see it's almost like a shell, a shell, a cocoon over the child. So when we when we install it we always need to check it at the area where the belt system is and you check it there and you want to make sure it doesn't move more than one inch front to back and side to side. So, one inch side to side, front to back, always at the belt path. Don't try it someplace else because that's not the way it's tested. Remember, all of these seats have been tested by the manufacturer, and the manufacturer then says to NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, we are certifying, self-certifying, that this is a safe seat. Every once in a while, you'll see that there are seats that have been recalled. When they're recalled, it's because the manufacturer and NHTSA, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, have determined that there's something wrong with the seat. That's why it's terribly important when you get a new seat, there will be a card with it that you fill out your name and address and mail it to the manufacturer. And what happens then is if there is a recall, they will notify you and tell you what to do in the recall. So it's very important. You don't have to pay for it. It, it has a self postage on it. But when you get a new seat, fill that in and send it back to the manufacturer. And with a lot of these uh, small child seats like this for the infants, I see a lot of uh, adults, uh, parents putting extra things on here, you know, um, maybe an extra cushion for their head because they think, oh, I mean, oh, my, my child needs to be a little more cushioned or they may put toys and they may hang them on the bar up here and things like that. Should, should it be something that they do? Absolutely not. Uh, what we s tell people is if the piece of equipment has come with the seat from the manufacturer, that's fine. Otherwise, we call those, those items aftermarket products and aftermarket products are not recommended. These, uh, as, as Barry's explaining, can be toys, they can be extra pillows, they can be extra padding. This is the way the seat was manufactured and tested. Now, this particular seat has several other pieces that go with it. It's a, a cushion for the head, etc. If it came with the seat, then it's safe to use. We also find that lots of times parents put screens, those screens that tack up on the sides of windows. Those are dangerous because in a crash they can break loose. You don't want anything that has not been manufactured with the car seat. All right, now let's look at another one of our uh, car seats and we'll tell you a little bit about it. This is the seat that the child goes into when they've come out of an infancy. Now, 
if you read the instructions and the information on the side of the seat, you understand that a child from birth at age five, at five pounds, can be put in this seat and stay in it probably until they're close to four years old. What you have to remember is to read what the instructions tell you about the weight limit of the seat. So, it can be rear facing from five pounds up to 40 pounds with this internal harness. This is very similar to your seat belt that you'll find in your automobile. <coughs> Excuse me. And it keeps the child placed in the seat. And we call this pre-crash placement. What it means is the child is held at the right position until the crash occurs and then this system, the belt system, helps to keep them in the seat. One of the things you will notice about a uh, uh, convertible seat is that there are several series of openings where you can put the straps. I'll show you that from the back. And this, this can adjust to the height of the child also. Exactly, can. exactly. And what you want to remember is that when you have a child that's rear facing, that early, early infant stage, you want those straps to come over the shoulders, from below the shoulders, over the top of the shoulders. Once the child is forward facing, you want those straps to come down from above. So, most convertible seats you're going to find have a reinforcement bar mm -hmm. on the back. We'll turn that around, let's just see that. That reinforcement bar must, you must be above the reinforcement bar. This particular seat has the, the whole back uh, reinforced, so, or the upper two slots. What you want to find out is where the reinforcement is because if in a crash the forward force of the child in the seat might pull through the back mm -hmm. if it is not over that reinforcement bar. So again, internal harness. This is what we call a five-point harness. It comes from over the shoulders. It comes from uh, around the hips and at the crotch. And then there is this mechanism that locks these two belts in place. You want to make sure that that is at armpit level on the child, always. Move it up, move it down. We see so many times that it's too far down and it's way down here. What's going to happen is these straps are going to open. So you want to know, realize that these straps, when they're properly tightened, will not allow you to pinch that, that strap. We always used to say you could put a finger under it and it needed to be that tight. But the recommendation now is that you can't pinch that, that particular belt. What it's doing is keeping that child in the seat because of this clip. And you'll say, well, that's only a plastic clip. It has to do with the dynamics, the crash dynamics, and it has been well tested and, and documented that this will hold for the child. Now, this is a convertible seat. So right. uh, we can actually use this as a booster seat, right? It can be, yes. These straps can be removed at 40 pounds, and I don't know of a seat right now. There are a couple on the market, but they're, they're not uh, ones that are commonly used. These straps must be removed at 40 pounds. You'll find that in the instructions on the side of the seat. So they've only been tested up to 40 pounds. You take the straps out, you can find out how to do it. it it's sort of easy. <laughs> Remove those straps mm -hmm. and then... Yeah, you would take it from the back and this one actually is a lot easier than most. Right. You would unstrap it here and then run that back out. Exactly. And what happens then is you use the regular lap shoulder belt. Remember, a booster seat must be used with both the lap and shoulder belt. It cannot be used with just a lap belt. 
So we're running into some difficulties with the transition of older cars. Uh, sometimes uh, we have to recommend that a parent put a child in the front seat, which we don't like to see. But because there, there are no shoulder belts in the back seat, you couldn't use a booster. So you have to pay attention to those things. And again, <clears throat> excuse me, we've mentioned this several times. There are child passenger safety technicians in all of our areas. If you will call our office, we can put you in touch with one and they can help you install that seat. They can help you understand the particular issues with your automobile and the seat that you've chosen. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna show you a different type of seat. It will be a booster seat. All right, this seat is a high back booster seat. It did have an internal harness, a five point harness, which means that it could have been for a smaller child. But we've taken that out to show you how to use this as a booster seat. Tell them a little about, about this seat. The reason we use this high back booster is to protect the child from whiplash. In other words, if the, the seat back in the car is not high enough, this provides them with the same protection that a headrest does for an adult. And this particular seat, it's good all the way up to 100 pounds. And all the seats are marked like this. And you know, if you come across a seat that doesn't have instructions and doesn't have all those things in place, you might want to buy a new one because there's uh, a chance that you might not install it properly, you know? That's right. One of the things that, that Barry's just brought up, you need to check to see when your seat was manufactured. A seat is only good for six years, and someplace on a seat, you're going to find the date of manufacture. It might be on a, a cloth tag on the seat. It may be actually uh, part of the, the plastic uh, shell, but it tells you when it was manufactured, and you can only use it for six years from the date of manufacture. Now, it may have been sitting someplace for two or three years and you weren't using it. That's not the issue. It's not six years of use. It is six years from date of manufacturer. Betsy, let me ask you a question. Um, maybe somebody has a car seat they've had for a while or maybe they're gone out and they've, they, uh, a lot of times I may see one at a garage sale. Would you, would you suggest somebody buying one like that that they don't know the history of or uh, would you suggest just go ahead and buying a new one? Buy a new one. If you are a low-income individual and cannot afford a new one, then there are groups of people that can possibly supply you with a new seat. But the point is, if you don't know where that seat has been, whether it's been involved in a crash, uh, any of the details, if the labels are off it, you're not going to know probably how old the seat is. So you want to make sure that you understand clearly all there is about the seat. If you purchased the seat yourself and have used it, then you know what the history is. But if you buy it at a garage sale or in a consignment shop or someplace, you see them all the time along the, the side of the road for mm -hmm. people that are selling objects. You don't want to buy those because you don't know about the particular seat. Now we're going to uh, look at the back of this seat and a lot of the, well, all the new seats have this mechanism in them. This is a latch system. And uh, tell us a little bit about what a latch system is. The latch system appears in automobiles manufactured after 1999. What it, what it does, it provides these metal hooks and again, webbing that allow you to hook the seats into metal rods down between the back and the seat or the seat bite of your car. It, they were designed to make installation easier. In some instances, it is not easier. <laughs> so you have to determine whether you want to use the latch. It is no safer than the traditional uh, seat belt system. So you just have to decide for yourself what is going to work best for you. The thing I have that mm -hmm. makes me question using latch is you might be able to get it in, but it's very difficult to get it out again. Now, speaking of that, there is a new rating system, isn't there, that talks about uh, up to a five-star rating of the ease 
of putting a car seat in. Can we talk a little bit about that? NHTSA, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, has designed this system whereby a, a purchaser can go in and look on their website, NHTSA.gov, and determine the ease the, the ease if everything goes well with your car <laughs> and the particular seat, the ease with which you can install the seat. So you might want to consider that before you purchase a seat. Go and look at that website. It gives you some interesting information. All right, in just a second, we're going to show you how to get some of these seats, seats installed in your car. Now we're going to show you how to put a base in for an infant only car seat. Now this is a typical base and a lot of times, uh, like Betsy talked about earlier, families will have a couple of these, one in one car and one in the other. That way they can get the infant carrier out quickly. Now I'm going to quickly show you how to find out whether your car has a latch system or not. On the rear seat, there should be a little sign here that looks like a little child sitting in the seat. And right down underneath that is where the latch goes. And I'm going to quickly show you how fast this is to get it hooked up. Now what you can do to make sure that this is good and tight, put a little bit of weight on it, put your arm in there. Now when we test this to make sure that it's tight enough, it doesn't need to move any more than an inch right here at the base. Now there's another way you can install this seat, which would be with the seat belt. And what you would want to do, you'd want to pull the seat belt all the way out to make sure that it's a switchable belt. And this one is, it locks. You would pull it all the way out and run it through just like you would install a normal seat belt. Now, if uh, this was not a switchable one and it didn't lock, you might need to use this. A lot of people misuse this and they put it in the wrong place. This would actually go right about here on the belt, right is where the buckle goes, just about an inch or so above that, and that way it would be installed properly. Now, once your base is in, you need to just take your seat and install it like so. You need to look and make sure that it's, it's properly leveled. Now, the handle is in the proper position. It needs to be down. A lot of times we do see it up here, and that is wrong because, like Betsy was talking about earlier, if you were to have an accident, this seat is supposed to make somewhat of a cocoon when there's an accident, and it will do just like this. It'll come up, go against the back seat, and protect the child, encompass, encompassing it completely. That way the child is safe. Now this is a convertible seat. It has the five point harness. It can turn into a booster seat. Now we're going to show you how to get the latch system installed properly. And Betsy's going to show you how to get the tether that goes on top locked down. I'll just kind of hand it back. What you find is the tether attachment is found in different places. This is why you get your manual out. You're going to hook the tether on this particular bar and then tighten it to make sure that the upper part of the seat in front here does not pitch forward. You will see that on this cover there is a child passenger safety seat so you know that this is the place it's supposed to be hooked. You want that hook to go down toward the base. You don't want the hook coming out. You want it down. And then you tighten it and it as you can see, it also comes underneath. You want the tether on the top of the seat, not over the headrest, but you want it underneath there to properly attach it. Okay? And then you just tighten it. Then we'll cut, show that. And now, just like the other seat that we showed you a minute ago, this seat latches right down inside, right there and it's locked, and then once you get the other side locked in, you just give a good tug on this, push a little bit down on the seat as you're pulling, and get it in there good and tight. And once it's good and tight, it's only gonna move about an inch or less. That way you'll know that the seat's installed properly. Are you ready to go, Diego? This 
particular seat is what we call a high back booster with an internal harness. We have removed the harness because the child is over 40 pounds. And what we're going to do is use this seat with the regular lap belt system. And so it's the same idea as an adult. You take the lap belt and the shoulder belt and hook it. There are clips on the side that will help you adjust after you've inserted the belt to keep the belt down away from the child's neck. You also need to make sure that the child has his arms inside, that he has not taken and put this particular piece behind his back. That's one thing that they love to do. Remember, when you're, you're working with a booster seat, to explain to your child that this is not a baby seat. This is a booster seat. This is a seat that helps them rise up and be able to see out properly. It also is helping them be more comfortable with the regular lap shoulder belt. Now this particular seat, you need to check again in your manual. This one does say that you should have the tether attached. The tether on the back that goes through over the, uh, the back of the seat, underneath the headrest, and attaches to the bar that's clearly identified in the back compartment of the automobile. Remember, this needs to be away from the child's neck. You need to explain to the child that this is really going to help them see better and enjoy the ride and be more comfortable. You want to make sure that this belt, the lap belt, is down across the tops of the child's legs. You don't want it up on the abdomen. If it's on the abdomen, it would cause internal injury if the child's thrown forward. So, tops of the legs, down away from the neck, and you've used the tether because the instruction manual told you to do so. This is just the regular lap shoulder belt that the adults use, but it certainly is going to provide an opportunity for your child to be much more protected than if he was not in the booster seat. Now this is a backless booster seat. It goes for children 40 to 100 pounds and also up to 57 inches tall. And it works uh, kind of like the high back booster does, but you would use this in case the, uh, you can use this when the seat is up high enough like this one is. And that way you would use the three point harness belt. You would bring it in, buckle the child in, just like this. Now this also has something that keeps the belt off their neck and it's adjustable this piece here will actually enable you to adjust it. You can run the belt through it and that way it can adjust to the height of the child. That way it hits properly right across the shoulders. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the newer cars and uh, the new safe, newer safety features that a lot of people may be worried about. You know, if, if they're putting a car seat in their car, you know, anything from the side airbags to maybe if they had just a uh, you know, didn't have a rear seat and need to put the child in a seat in the front. So let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. One thing about the Scion, is this particular car is it's got a weight sensing airbag. It senses when somebody is in that seat, mm -hmm. whether it's a human being or weight, it just senses. And it's dual stage too, it senses what kind of weight's in the seat, where a lot of the older cars do not have mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the trucks that we have now, the standard cab trucks, they just have a switch where you can cut the airbag off if you right. want to haul a child's car seat in it. Right. So one of the things we, we want the parents to understand is that you cannot put an infant seat in front of a passenger airbag. It absolutely cannot be done and you'll find when you look at your car that there are warning signs uh, probably on top of your visor or someplace in the front of the cab that tells you not to install a seat in front of a uh, passenger airbag. One of the things that we need to understand though is this is only talking about a rear facing infant seat. Sometimes you have more children than you have seat belts 
and you have to put a child in the front of the in the front of the automobile. If they if you do that, we ask that you move the seat back as far as possible away from the dashboard and away from the airbag. One thing you want to remember is that you have to consider all of the people in the automobile and you have to do what's best in terms of locating the child passenger safety seat for the, the most efficiency within the vehicle. It's really important that you understand what many of these wonderful new safety features are because each year we find that automobile manufacturers want they want their clients to come back yes. and consequently they want them to live and and we are finding that there are many many wonderful features in automobiles such as the products that Toyota produces well, one thing one thing about Toyota and, and, and Toyota manufacturing is they're ahead of the curve on a lot of things like their traction mm -hmm. control their safety features as where a lot of cars are going to be required to do that eventually They've already got that. Not to say they're any better than anybody else, but the fact is they've done. They're ahead of the curve, mm -hmm. and uh, they've uh, they've applied a lot of these safety features for the families. And it is all about safety. It absolutely and, uh, is protecting your family. It absolutely That's is. That's the main thing. Right. Well, thank you for letting us thank come you. out today. I appreciate y'all coming out. And uh, it's been thank great. You, thank you a lot. You are welcome. Thank you for coming now, if you have any questions about uh, child passenger seats. We're going to put a number up where you can get in touch with Betsy, or you also call us at the Kingsport Fire Department at 229-9440. And you can even uh, set an appointment with either myself or with her, and we'll check out your car seat for you. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned a lot.